Hello everyone, I am Saurabh and I welcome you all to the Digital Both series by Orchids Biosciences. In this series, we will discuss the chapters related to biology for class 10. I will also be discussing some questions from the previous years at the end of the videos and I have provided the link for all the notes of the discussed topics in the description below. Now, let's get started with the first chapter of this series, Life Processes. In this video, we will be discussing an introduction to life processes and then we will come to the four major life processes in the chapter. They are nutrition, respiration, transportation and excretion. Then under nutrition, we will be discussing autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition. And finally, under the autotrophic mode of nutrition, we will be discussing the concept of photosynthesis in detail. So let's get started. Life processes. So what are these life processes? We know that in order to remain alive, we need to perform certain activities which are essential for the survival. So these activities which are performed by living organism which are essential for their survival or sustenance of their life are called as life processes. To perform various activities in our body, we require energy. Where does the body get the energy from? Our body get the energy from the food that we eat because it contains various nutrients. So the process of obtaining or utilizing these nutrients is called as nutrition and this is the first life process. So through the process of nutrition, our body gets nutrients. Now these nutrients will be utilized to provide energy for the body and the process in which nutrients are broken down to release energy for various cellular needs is called as respiration and this forms a second life process. So through the process of nutrition we take in the nutrients and then through the process of respiration we break down these nutrients to release energy from this. In the process of respiration we human beings require oxygen whereas certain other organisms do not require it but for the process of respiration in our body we require oxygen and oxygen is transported throughout the body through blood. Blood not only carries oxygen but also nutrients and various other important substances. Now, the oxygen, the nutrients and various other important substances are transported to various other parts of the body through blood and this is called as transportation. So I can say transportation is the process by which a substance which is available in one part of the body or which is made in one part of the body is transported to various other required parts of the body and here comes the third life process. So we have seen what is nutrition, what is respiration and then transportation. There are various biochemical processes or reactions which are taking in our body. For example, respiration is one such process and during these biochemical reactions, there are various waste products that are generated. I can say waste product or byproducts which are generated during this biochemical reactions and these have to be removed from our body and the process of removal of this waste product is called as excretion and this is the fourth important life process why is excretion necessary or why are the removal of waste product necessary it is not only useless or unuseful for the body but it can be harmful or toxic if it is stored in the body so they have to be removed out from the body and this process is called as excretion. Now we will discuss the first life process in detail that is nutrition. Now coming to the concept of nutrition. As discussed earlier, nutrition is a process of utilizing or obtaining the nutrients which come from food. Nutrition can be broadly classified into two types. First one is known as autotrophic nutrition and the second one is called as heterotrophic nutrition. We will discuss one by one. In autotrophic mode of nutrition, the organism can prepare or synthesize its own food. They prepare their own food by using some simple inorganic substances like carbon dioxide and water from the surroundings and they also use the light energy which comes from sun for preparing their food. The organisms which prepare the food from the autotrophic mode of nutrition are called as autotrophs. So we can say autotrophic mode of nutrition is a mode of nutrition in which 
the organism can prepare or synthesize their own food using some simple inorganic substances like carbon dioxide and water along with the light energy which comes from sun and the organisms which prepare their food through autotrophic nutrition are called as autotrophs we can write examples as plants and certain autotrophic bacteria now what about heterotrophic mode of nutrition it is completely opposite to autotrophic nutrition in heterotrophic mode of nutrition the organisms cannot or can't prepare their own food they depend on other organism for their food they depend on other organism like other autotrophs or other other heterotrophs itself they take in some complex food which is then later broken down into simpler forms and then the simpler form of food is taken by the body and the conversion of the complex substances into simpler ones are done by certain enzymes we will be discussing about various enzymes in the chapter later examples for heterotrophic mode of nutrition which are called as heterotrophs can be animals most of the bacteria and fungus now come into autotrophic nutrition so through autotrophic nutrition how do the autotrophs prepare their own food the autotrophs prepare their food by the process of photosynthesis what is photosynthesis let us split up this word in photosynthesis photo means light and synthesis means production what is produced here we know autotrophs prepare their food or they produce their food so we can say there is production of food by using the light energy which comes from sun and we also know that in autotrophic nutrition the autotrophs take in some inorganic substances from the surroundings like carbon dioxide and water so we know that the autotrophs take carbon dioxide water and sunlight from their surroundings and they produce the food so now we can define photosynthesis as a production of food by autotrophs utilizing carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and a pigment known as chlorophyll what is this chlorophyll we will discuss when we are discussing about the raw materials now let us discuss the raw materials the first raw material is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is taken in from the air through some small pores present on the leaves which are called as stomata if we take a leaf and see there will be numerous small pores present on them and if we try to zoom in or magnify a small pore we will be seeing two cells attached to this pores and these cells will be guarding this stomata and hence they are called as the guard cells the stomata are not only present on the leaves but are also present on the roots as well as the stem of the plant and hence it is not only the site of entry of carbon dioxide but can it but it can also prove a site for the loss of water from the plants so when there is no need for carbon dioxide for the plants they have to close the stomata so that there is no loss of water how it is done it is done by the shrinking of the guard cells when this guard cells shrink the stomata will completely close so these guard cells will shrink for the closing of stomata now what if the plant again requires carbon dioxide the guard cells will now swell up when the guard cells swell up the stomata will open so the opening of stomata as well as the closing of stomata both are regulated by the swelling and shrinking of guard cells that is why we say guard cells regulate the opening and the closing of the small pores present on leaves called as stomata now the next raw material that is water water is present in the soil which is taken up by the roots third raw material that is sunlight sunlight comes from sun which acts as a source of light energy for the plant to prepare its food this light energy this light energy will be trapped by the fourth raw material that is known as chlorophyll we know that there are certain green plastids present in the cells of plants and these plastids are known as chloroplast 
This chloroplast contains some green colored pigments in them and these green pigments are called as chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is very very essential for trapping the light energy which comes from sun. So these are the four raw materials. Now what happens in leaf? We will see. Now let us see what happens in the leaves. We know that leaves have this chlorophyll pigment which is responsible for trapping the light energy which comes from the sun. Leaves will also be getting the carbon dioxide which is taken in through the stomata as well as the water which was present in the soil and was taken up by the roots. Now the light energy which was taken up or trapped by the chlorophyll molecule will be used to split up this water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. Then this light energy will be converted to chemical energy. So the, in the very first process the light energy is trapped then the light energy is used to convert water into hydrogen and oxygen then it is converted into chemical energy and finally the carbon dioxide will now combine with the hydrogen so carbon dioxide now combines with hydrogen to give a glucose molecule what is remaining now the oxygen molecule this oxygen will be released as a byproduct for this reaction so now if i put up the entire process of photosynthesis in three simple steps I can write it as the first step to be absorption of light or absorption of light energy by the chlorophyll pigments. Then in the second step I can write this light energy will be used to split up or break the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen and later this light energy will be converted to chemical energy. In the third and the most important step the carbon dioxide will now react with hydrogen or I can say the carbon dioxide will be reduced to give a carbohydrate that is glucose here. This glucose is a form of carbohydrate. Now this carbohydrates will be utilized by the plant to give energy. And the carbohydrate which is not utilized at that time will be then converted into a stored form of energy. Which is called as starch. So the carbohydrates which is utilized then will be used to give energy to the plant whereas the carbohydrates which are remaining will be converted to a stored form of energy which is called as starch and will be later used by the plant. So this is the entire process of photosynthesis with which they produce their own food. Now if we are asked to write the entire reaction for photosynthesis we can write the reaction as carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives C6H12O6 that is glucose the form of carbohydrate and oxygen is given as byproduct. If we try to balance it 6 moles of carbon dioxide, 6 moles of water, 1 mole of glucose and 6 moles of oxygen and this brings us to the end of autotrophic mode of nutrition. Now let us recall what we have discussed so far. We started from life processes the activities which are essential for the survival of living beings. Under life processes, we started with nutrition, the process of obtaining or utilizing the nutrients. When then after that, we discussed the process of respiration in which the nutrients are then broken down to give energy for various cellular needs. Then we discussed the concept of transportation in which the blood carries oxygen, nutrients and various other substances to all the required parts of the body. And finally, the removal of the byproducts or waste from the various biochemical reactions in the body called as excretion. Then under nutrition we discuss the autotrophic nutrition in which the organism can prepare their own food and then the heterotrophic mode of nutrition in which the organism depend on other organisms for their food because they cannot prepare their own food. And finally under the autotrophic mode of nutrition we discuss the concept of photosynthesis in which the autotrophs prepare their food using carbon dioxide and water along with sunlight and chlorophyll. So this is all that we have discussed in this video. Now let us discuss a question from 2019 paper for 3 marks. The question was list in tabular form 3 distinguishing features between autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. First we can make a table on the left hand side we can write autotrophic on the right hand side we can write heterotrophic. The first and the very basic point in autotrophic mode of nutrition can be the autotrophs can synthesize or they can prepare their own food. 
whereas contradicting to this in heterotrophic mode of nutrition the heterotrophs can't synthesize or they can't prepare their own food we know that the autotrophs can prepare their own food using some inorganic raw materials like they take in carbon dioxide and water they also require the light energy which comes from sun to prepare their food so the autotrophs require carbon dioxide water and the light energy from the sun to prepare their food but heterotrophic mode of nutrition doesn't require any such materials they because they directly depend on other organisms for their nutrition the third point in autotrophic mode of nutrition can be for making the food chlorophyll pigment is very very essential for photosynthesis and you can also include that photosynthesis is the process here whereas in heterotrophic mode of nutrition since they depend on other organism for their food there is no need for chlorophyll so i can say chlorophyll is not needed and here no photosynthesis occurs you can add few more points like the organism which autotrophic mode of nutrition are called as autotrophs and the organism which show heterotrophic mode of nutrition are called as heterotrophs you can further add on to the examples like plants and some autotrophic bacteria here while for heterotrophic mode of nutrition you can add examples like animals most of the bacteria and fungus so with this we come to the end of this video in the next video we will discuss about the second part of the nutrition that is heterotrophic mode of nutrition thank you so much for watching if you like this video please hit the like button share it with your friends and subscribe to our youtube channel